Hi everyone, Ollie here. Welcome back once again to the channel. I am a final year medical student at the University of Warwick on the Graduate Entry Medicine programme, due to graduate and finish medical school in about a week. A week today, in fact. Isn't that exciting? So for the last six weeks, I've been doing what's called an assistantship, which is a thing we do here at Warwick after you finish your final exams and you've passed everything so you're deemed fit to move on, you then move on to the assistantship. Now in this assistantship, the, the kind of point of it is basically to shadow an existing FY1, Foundation Year 1 doctor, who has been working as a doctor for about one year because they're all due to rotate around when we join the NHS in August. Because the age-old thing remains true, medical school doesn't prepare you how to be a doctor. You only learn to be a doctor once you finish medical school and you start doing the job basically. I very much believe that's still to be true, and I think everyone knows that really. So once you've got all your exams out of the way, there's this very accelerated learning period where you learn how to actually do the job. So what does this actually mean in practice? Well, I spent four weeks in respiratory medicine at University Hospital Coventry in Warwickshire, or UHCW, which is one of the big tertiary teaching hospitals in the area. And I've been able to observe my assigned FY1 in his working day, so preparing notes for the ward round in the morning, documenting on the ward round, requesting things like bloods, imaging, things like chest x-rays, chasing those up, and then doing minor procedures on patients, such as taking blood, uh, taking arterial blood gases and things like that. We were given quite a comprehensive list of sign-offs that we needed to achieve in tandem with our assigned FY1 doctor, which included things like attending an MDT meeting, the multidisciplinary team meeting, uh, verifying a patient's death and filling out a death certificate, prescribing something in a patient's drug card X, doing an ABG, a nasogastric tube. So essentially a mix of core skills and clinical skills that will be routine as part of the work for FY1. And I found that in respiratory medicine, I was able to do most of these extremely quickly because it's a medical ward. Obviously lots of these things are going on. And because of COVID, there are actually a lot of non-respiratory patients on the respiratory ward. I was based between respiratory medicine and infectious diseases, but we may also see cardiology cases, gastro cases, endocrine cases, oncology cases, and so on. Because as I'm sure is the case around the country, there's a real shortage of acute medicine beds. So for me, that meant that I was exposed to lots of different medical cases, not just respiratory, like I say, a mix of things. And that made seeing all of these different things and doing all of these different procedures much much easier than perhaps it would have been in a non-covid climate and then for the last two weeks i've been working on a psychiatry ward uh, with one of the fy ones there psychiatry by comparison um, would have been much much more difficult to get a lot of the sign-offs i really feel for my colleagues who were placed in psychiatry for the first four weeks the idea was that we would rotate between two specialties for four weeks each so for example you may have been based on cardiology for four weeks and then general surgery or paediatrics and then trauma and orthopedic surgery. I think the idea was to get a mix of two specialties. However, we were encouraged if it was practical to get all of your sign-offs done within the first five weeks so that we could be fully signed off and deemed eligible to graduate uh, at the end of five weeks. So about a week ago, we all attended the medical school on the Friday, brought in our little uh, booklets from the assistantship, had to show all our signatures and the fact that our consultant supervisor had deemed us kind of eligible to move on and that we'd been turning up and being part of the team. And if all of that was done and satisfactory, that's kind of it. That's the last placement of medical school done, the assistantship block, and you're deemed eligible to graduate. So even though it wasn't the entire year there, and of course, as I say, we were distanced, there were very rigorous measures in place, it was really nice to go back to the medical school for the first time in a very long time and see course mates that I've not seen in, in a couple of years, um, as, as odd as it sounds, because once you're into year two of the course, you see everyone a lot, lot less. And then of course, from basically the beginning of 2020, everything has either been online for us or in the trusts. And there's only a small percentage of your cohort even based in your trust at any one time. So actually seeing all of these people, in fact, many who I've not seen since first year and kind of looking back and thinking how far we've all come since then was, was really quite moving in a way that I didn't necessarily expect. And something that I thought I might show you guys and I've not actually looked through 
myself because I wanted to keep it for this video. We got given a little swag bag. I'm hoping you can see that, but the Warwick Doctor, which is this kind of motif that Warwick's been running with for the last year and a bit, if not slightly longer. But I thought we could go through this together and go through it. And not all of this stuff, I should just add quickly, is from the medical school. The MDU and Wesleyan uh, were also there, two of the kind of medico-legal and finance support groups uh, offering their services as we come on to qualify. And those are two things that I would recommend doing for yourself when the time comes, making sure that you've got some sort of medico-legal uh, indemnity cover and payment protection in place if you're for some reason not eligible to work, let's say chronic disability or sickness, especially the medico-legal side. I've seen enough horror situations and heard enough stories to know that that cover is very important. I'm with the MDU, but there are other groups available. So firstly, um, this probably won't show very well on camera at all, especially because of the lighting in here, but we have these lovely, quite heavy metal medals um, which have 2021, the Warwick Medical School logo, and it says WMS graduating class of 2021. Congratulations from the MBCHB team, which is really nice. MBCHB is the medical degree that you graduate with at Warwick. Bachelor of Medicine, Bachelor of Surgery, it's just the local variant, no pun intended. We have a, um, I guess it's a brain. It's a little stress ball, yeah, with the Warwick logo on it. Um, little stress squeezy thing. I'm sure that many of these are going to get absolutely demolished over the next year. I have a couple of little pin badges. Oh, the, the nice MDU, trust me, I'm a doctor pin and a little BMA. Um, so the British Medical Association, the trade union, one of the shopping trolley tokens. I have a little, um, a bottle of uh, Fentimans, the sort of upmarket uh, brewed Victorian lemonade. They're really, really nice if you've never had one random nice thing to have in one of these bags. I seem to have amassed a collection of pens. Um, lost that one from its wrapper. I'm not sure how many of these I just stole um, on the day, but we've got a couple of these bone ones, which I'm sure you'll have seen floating around the conferences. Two arms, or upper limbs, I should say. We have the ever-reliable MDU clicky, and these are the most reliable pens in the universe, the MDU one. I've had many are stolen by a nurse because of exactly how good they are. We have a nice Wesleyan one. This is just becoming a pen review uh, channel, but nice and weighty. Good click. Microphone up here. A few ASMR guys are getting something out of that one. And a BMA. Ooh. Yes. That's very useful. Pen torch. Um, a Cov Kid badge. A bit close to the bone. A lovely little bottle of Prosecco. Um, I can't remember who this was from. I think I picked this up from one of the stands. It may have been Wesleyan or the MDU. I can't remember, but I don't think the med school gave us alcohol. And then finally, um, oh, this looks very premium. I hope you can see this. This is the Warwick Doctor. Uh, I can only assume this is a pen case. Oh, it is. Look at that. That's so premium. Really nice. Oh, that's metal. Lovely black and gold Warwick ballpoint pen. That is lovely. I love the aesthetic. I equally like ballpoints. I prefer them to fountains. Maybe it's just because I'm uncultured. But what a lovely leaving gift. I'll pop some photos of that on. Now, what happens next? Well, technically, there are two more weeks of assistantship that we could keep working through if we so wished. However, I've actually booked two weeks of annual leave um, from the end of the course, as that's a thing that you do towards the end of medical school. There are no breaks, you just book annual leave when you want it. For two reasons, really. Um, I'm already signed off, and hopefully I find out on Monday whether or not I'll have been deemed fully competent, but there's no real reason why I shouldn't be. And secondly, because there is an extra week of shadowing now before we begin our jobs as FY1 doctors on the 4th of August, or Black Wednesday, that is to say there's usually a paid week of shadowing before uh, that to ease you into your new trust on your new job. Because of COVID, this has been extended to two weeks. However, because equally on the other side, our exams at Warwick were pushed back because of COVID, this would have left absolutely no gap between finishing medical school and going straight into the shadowing period with no time to move house or kind of get your life together. So what virtually all of us have done is taken at least one week's leave, most of us two, just to give a bit of a buffer period. So in the next week, 
um, basically I've got to move my life up to Newcastle um, get settled in in my new place which I'm very excited to show you guys uh, when the time comes and basically get ready for my first job which is as a surgical FY1 on a transplant unit which I'm sure is going to be very interesting and challenging there is protected time for doing things like audits going to theatre and I hope to go to theatre a lot as someone surgically minded but I think when I move I'll make a full video talking about exactly what my jobs are I can maybe show you what my rotor looks like all of the things I've had to do as an incoming FY1 and kind of take you through this transition with me because that's the next big cool step. Thanks so much for watching guys, take care and I will see you in the next video and be sure to watch the other video that went live today in my Your Life at Medical School series. Take care and I'll see you next time.